really glad to have our old friend Scott Rasmussen, president of Rasmussen Reports, uh, with us today. He's an independent pollster for more than a decade, and uh, like the company he started, Scott maintains his independence and has never been a campaign pollster or consultant for candidates seeking office. Scott, good to have you with us. Senator, always good to be back. Well, Scott, uh, you got to be feeling good because apparently you are in the profession that's running this country nowadays. <laughs> Uh, I pick up the so. I pick up the paper and I read the poll. Then I see that the the Democrats on the Hill, that uh, the um, uh, reporters in the Washington Post are on television this morning saying our polls show and and definitively saying what the American uh, they're the voice for the American people. And it's being used by uh, proponents of the health care bill now to say that uh, people strongly support the public option. People strongly pr- support the, the new mandate. Uh, of course, I'm talking about a new uh, Washington Post ABC news poll. And, and here I am, Scott, just a just a poor little old consumer of, of news, trying to figure out what's going on. And um, I'm reading. Uh, that uh, people are concerned about uh, health care. I'm reading where people uh, are apparently uh, opposed uh, to, to uh, the plans that are coming out now by a rate of about 45% for, 48% against. And yet I see this poll this morning where everything is kind of switch drastically around in terms of people's attitude about a public option and new mandates. What is one to make of all this? Well, first of all, you know, you have to remember that the dialogue that goes in goes on inside Washington D.C. does not often reflect what is happening out around the country and that uh, includes the use of terminology. Uh, what they talk about as the public option in, in legislation is not a clearly understood concept beyond the halls of Congress. Uh, when we ask people in general about do they favor or oppose the health care bill that's working its way through Congress right now, 42 percent favored, 54 percent are against. Those numbers have barely budged for months. When we've tried to describe a public option to people, uh, they like the idea. They like the idea of giving consumers a choice of you know, different health insurance plans. But when we say, uh, what if the implementation of, uh, uh, you know, and we've, we've defined it ahead of time, a public option, uh, encourage some companies to drop their coverage and, and let people be uh, covered by the government. Well, when you put that fear in, only 29% support the public option, 58% are opposed. And what we have found consistently from the beginning of this health care debate is that while people like the idea of reform, they like the idea of change, they want to have more competition, the fear of losing their existing coverage trumps all of that uh, because they don't trust Congress. Well, uh, that that makes a lot of sense uh, to me. We we all know. I, th- I think those of us who follow this uh, this business that uh, what you said uh, in the beginning is absolutely true. Uh, the terminology we throw around here uh, in, in Washington D.C. is not the way the American people uh, think about things. Um, and I look at the way, uh, according to the uh, to the Post this morning, the way that they um, pose some of these questions apparently. Is right along with what you were saying. For example, on the mandate issue, they say, would you, they put to the people, would you support or oppose a law that required all Americans to have health insurance, either getting it from work, buying it on their own, or through uh, eligibility for Medicare and Medicaid? Uh, support 56%, oppose 41%. I mean, that, that's a very, I mean, it's kind of like who could be against that? I mean, <laughs> that's, that's all kind of. Good news. I mean, it feels good. I mean, right. you know, until and, you till you break it down. And, and you're right. Uh, it, uh, people do want to see something done. Uh, 54% of Americans believe our health care system needs major changes. But if you were to take that question and present it, uh, you know, really on the people that it would most impact, we've, uh, we've asked about uh, should people who are young and healthy and who have made a decision not to buy health insurance, should they be required to buy it? Only 31% say yes. 
Uh, you know, there, there is a recognition out there. And this is one of the troubles you get into. Um, polling is a very good profession. It can give you a lot of insights, um, and especially when, uh, when public opinion is settled and an issue has been debated. Uh, years ago, when, when uh, term limits was a hot issue, you could ask term limit questions any way you wanted to, and you would get 75% support. When an issue is not very well established in the public mind, uh, the way you phrase a question can have a big impact on the results. And that's why, you know, when, when all is said and done, my faith in terms of the polling on health care is not on things that describe the specific intricacies of a proposal, but rather this, you know, sense of do you favor or oppose the effort that's coming out of Congress right now? Because that gets to the political dynamic. Well, uh, so well, that makes sense. So, so did you, as the expert that you are, uh, fe- feel that? Uh, of course, I, I know you're polling all the time, uh, but 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 feel that you learned anything incrementally from uh, from what you read in the Washington Post this morning. Well, it confirms other polls that I have seen before, um, and and I think the thing that surprises me the most is. Uh, my belief is that the Democratic Party is um, is missing the suspicion, the skepticism of government. They are so convinced that people are skeptical of insurance companies, which they are, uh, that they're missing the other side of this. And I think, and look, our polling shows the same thing, that if Democrats overwhelmingly want to pass this kind of reform. Republicans and independents do not. And I think the Democrats have now convinced themselves they have to pass this or they'll suffer consequences. My expectation is if it passes in its current form or in its currently discussed form, that the consequences will be bad for the Democratic Party in 2010. And I also see here uh, by their by their own uh, uh, poll results, 68 percent of the people think health care reform will increase the deficit. That's right. There is no belief in the cost projections put forth uh, by by the government, whether it's controlled by Republicans or Democrats. Um, and that gets to one of the core problems. You know, the when, uh, when the American people think about health care reform in the broadest sense, they're looking for something that will control costs. And they don't believe that a government program is going to do that. Uh, that's why you start to have some difficulty. Uh, and deficit neutral is only part of the problem. Uh, if it costs $900 billion and you increase taxes by $900 billion, somebody's going to pay for that. Uh, and how it gets paid for is a real challenge when we have a president who was elected uh, as much as anything else and a promise to cut taxes for 95% of all Americans. Well, it's what we call around here just a little bit of common sense, Scott. And uh, it, it, what you say it gives us some hope and faith that the American people really are paying attention. Scott Rasmussen, thank you for once again being with us and shedding some light on this important subject. Thank you. Appreciate it.